Okay, so welcome to the Forest Coffee Break. Uh, this is the episode number third, uh, 30th, the 30th episode of the Forest Coffee Break. We're gonna, we've been a long way here. Uh, thank you very much for joining today. Uh, hoping you're having a good week. And um, let me start with you. If you have any topics that you wanna bring up, anything that you are working with this last, last couple of weeks, any exciting projects, any topics that you wanna bring up, please feel free to open your microphone and share your questions. Or maybe you all need some coffee as well. Hi, this is the... Hi Rumi, good morning. Hi. Good morning. I have a question regarding yes. the issues API for uh, ACC, mm -hmm. any uh, dates uh, regarding it? Okay. Uh, yeah, so just to give context to others, uh, there is an issues API for BIM 360. And if you go to the documentation, it says that it's not compatible with ACC. That's the one you're talking, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I believe that there is no current public timeline for that one yet and probably still working on it. Yeah, sorry about that. No problem. Uh, is there yes. a public timeline somewhere that we can all see or? Yes, yeah, yes, will be. So uh, AU is coming ah, there will be. less than a month. Yes, and uh, there is a class from uh, Mikako Harada. She'll be talking about what's coming with uh, BIM 360, ACC. Cyril that is here is also, we'll also be talking about few uh, roadmap topics, uh, timeline, new features that are coming for Forge in general, but Mikaku specifically should be talking about uh, BIM 360 and ACC. So uh, her class will be at the AU. That's, that's the next timeline we have. Perfect, thanks. Unless Cyril know anything else, let me bring you to the spot, Cyril, if you know any other. Information. Well, it's still in flux, um, so it's a bit difficult to uh, to talk about this now. But as you said, uh, being at AU or, or listening Mikako or or the Ford roadmap will will give you all the information you need. At least it it will not only clarify the situation today, but give you an idea about um feature on what it means okay yes so uh just as we're here right uh au au.autodesk.com you can register for au but if you go to the forge website um and i believe under forge at au right here community that's uh that is one specific page for forge related events at au right and uh here you can see is wrong with my microphone. Yeah. So here you can see the for uh, 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 for specific events, right? And uh, we have uh, you know we have the roadmap class that I mentioned. We also have a boot camp that is happening in two weeks. Yeah, next week actually. And there is a hackathon as well by the end of September. So if you have a project that you want to uh, work during that week and showcase that project at the U, the hackathon is is an amazing chance. And uh, there are some prizes at the hackathon as well. So if you wanna participate and win some prizes and have marketing exposure for your the, uh, your application, that's your chance. Sounds great. So thank you for your question, Rami. Just thank you. Thanks. Any other questions, any other topics? Okay, so what else is going on? Uh, I, was, I was just grabbing a few code samples that we did, did last few weeks. And I think this one is quite interesting. Um, I was, this actually came from a customer. He was trying to um, mimic the behavior we have inside Revit. And uh, he wants to, press tab and move between the uh, the nested families in, in Revit. So if I scroll down here, 
I can see that inside Revit, if you mouse over one element and click tab, that will move between the nested families. Uh, the behavior inside Revit is it's it's very specific because the families, uh, this is how Revit we organize all the families. And when it comes to the Forge viewer, it's not exactly the same um, structure, but it's something very similar, right? And um, so I did I did this uh, sample here where you can, uh, where once you press tab, it goes to the model tree and uh, just selects the, the parent node and keeps going to the parent node until it reaches the the top uh, the upper level and then it goes back to the original element that you are started clicking um i was wondering if that's a common thing that you've you've seen this kind of request before if you are working with revit anyone have seen this i was i was, I was quite that was quite interesting if you don't know it, this is uh, this extension is now part of the Forge extensions, um, which is a collection that our team is doing with you no know, easy to use extensions that you can just uh, grab. Uh, the source code is available here, but you can also try the extension right here on this on this UI. So let's say the one I was just mentioning is this uh, tab selection that you can go to this uh, on the right side, click on select the extension you want to load and uh, as i know this tab selection and there is some information here use tab to rotate selection etc and uh, if i click on the element and let me open the model tree and uh, let me move up here so now i'll just i'll just press tab right and you move up on the tree now i'm selecting the the parent node and move up again move up one more time that will get me all the walls and if i press tab one more time We'll go back to the original element because it reaches the it reaches the end of the, the the model tree, right? So it goes back to the the, the original element. But there are several uh, interesting uh, extensions here that you can try. Um, the custom properties. I think Adam did this one. That it's actually very basic, but it shows how you can um, add uh, custom properties. Yeah, right here on the viewer. I don't think they're showing here yet, right, Adam? Very basic. How dare you? <laughs> well, it's it's you. <laughs> I can I can say that. Yeah. But you can you can come to the learn more piece and um, let me extend this. And uh, there is a, a source code on how to do it, right? So that will create a my group with. Um, I think it's 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 interesting because it's it's so simple to do it uh, that uh, that it makes. Uh, it's impressive, right? You can just you just have to overload uh, the the extension, the uh, custom properties extension, and set a new uh, here, set a new panel. And once that panel is loading, you just say, okay, add a new property, and you say the name, the value, and the group. And yeah, that's it, right? Yeah, I think it's actually based on your article. Your yeah. purpose. you can check the link. Yeah, I I found I found that you did the extension on the library after I was trying to do that uh, another sample, and uh, I, I I realized that we we changed this this piece here right now we have the aggregated properties because the viewer is working better with uh, multiple models so the aggregated we work we work with multiple models. Yeah, actually, this step selection is useful for inventor models as well. Many people run into the problem that always the solid gets selected. And of course, that does not have the properties that people need. So then you can mm. go up to the actual part. You can okay. go up and up. Yeah, oh, previously, I had, I had to write a blog post on uh, overriding the selection. But this would be probably just as yeah. useful. Yeah, so oh, I had to load the, the extension and uh, click on the element. Yeah. Or same way. The, the, the interesting piece about this extension is that the viewer organizes them into a model tree. So it doesn't really matter where the model is coming from because it's 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 going going up the tree, right? So it's oh yeah, thank you. There are several more extensions on this uh, on this library. And uh, the custom properties is one that Adam did. I believe you did, you did any, any other extension here, Adam? No, right? 
I might have updated one of them. I don't know, but I think yeah. I can't remember now. So have you have others used this extension before? And you have been very quiet today. No, no, uh, uh, other people here with us today. Oh. Do you use the other other extension? Let me just turn this. I like the yeah. transformation extension. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. cool. Uh, is that is that wrong? Yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, the transformation is quite cool as well, right? You can you can yes. quickly try. Yeah. That's my favorite one. Uh, Mani, you are now you're not duplicated here. <laughs> there is one more of you. Yes, that's a colleague of mine. Uh, I just shared can the you... link. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you explain us how you clone yourself? That would be very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> it's the other way around. The more talented one is the other model you see on the screen here, not me. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions, I have topics? A question. Yes. Who is there? Can you? I, Rami. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I've been asking the chat via email regarding it, but for the three legged authentication and partner cards, there's an issue like it doesn't accept it because of X frame option or deny. So if your partner card requires three legged authentication, it doesn't work. Yeah, so, I think I, yeah, I, I, I read that. Um, yeah, so the OAuth page that when you have to type yeah. your out of desk credentials, that page cannot be inside an iframe, right? Because, uh, uh, well, that, that, that is a security concern. Security. Yeah. Yes, um, I think we we escalated that, that that question. But what you can do is the, the only thing that you, the only way you can do it today is to have as a pop up that you open a new window, you know, and, uh, that the RLS page will be at, at the top frame, and that should work. But the, that is a problem of the, of the pop up. But other than that, should work. Okay, so there is no option like to. Uh, like allow it for if it's the ancestor has been 360. Like, is it an option? Yeah, as, as I said, we escalated that to try to get some okay. way to to work around to have a, a solution for it. Uh, I don't have uh, an answer yet. And uh, I think that okay. question came, I've, I didn't know it was from you. Uh, and uh, Jim was talking, discussing that with me as well. So we escalated that to the authentication team. Okay. Sorry, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a solution yet, but they, they are aware. Okay. Um. All right, Augusto, um, if there are no other questions, if you don't mind, I'm gonna ask you a question. Is that okay? Sure, go ahead. Going late. Um, we were at the Billboard uh, conference last week. We had the opportunity of having uh, an extensive conversation with Jim. Um, in, we learned something new that we, you know, it would be great if we spend a little bit of time today and uh, learn a little bit more about it, which is a way for querying geometry information separate from the metadata through SVF and SVF2. Um, what we want to do is want to make sure that, you know, when it comes to getting access to the properties of the model uh, in any other metadata, we do that through a query from a database um, and only loading the geometry. And apparently there's a way to do that. We've not been able to identify that. We are aware of your OBJ workflow but we wanted to see if there's anything that uh, has been done on the SVF and SVF2 side, meaning instead of the pockets that contain metadata that the client device has to download, just send a geometry, render the geometry and uh, pull metadata on demand. So just send the geometry and pull metadata? Well, Sorry, that's... Okay, uh, I'm trying to think SVF, of what... I think, I think you can disable a property loading, right? When you load I, the model, I, I, th I think I think he wants he wants to query the data, right? Many. Yeah. So I mean, one of the challenges that we have is that it takes you know a decent amount of time for the system to initialize, right? We want to see if yeah. we can expedite that by only passing the geometry to the client device. And if you disable properties, Adam, I think it don't 
the pockets are already on the client side. The act of query doesn't happen on the client side, right? I'm trying to figure out if the SVF file can only contain the geometry data only, or some mechanism of only passing geometry data to the, uh, to the scene, to the graphic scene. I'm not sure I understood. So if you disable yeah. property loading, then why why would it load it or what what do you mean? Yeah, basically just loading in geometry data. Um, yeah. In yeah, there, there is a way to um, disable all of those things. And I believe when you disable the data, it doesn't load the data on, on, the, on the browser. It really doesn't load it. It's, it's a way to optimize performance. And uh, I believe we do have an article on this topic. Let me quickly find this here. Um, where is it? I'll find it, give me a sec. I believe that's that's what what you are trying to accomplish. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Give me a sec. Well, the, the first thing, if you are using SVF two, there will be a lot of performance improvement because uh, we we are reducing the amount of geometry you are loading, right? Because we are deduplicating de uh, most of the most of the geometry. The second thing is that you can uh, load a module and. Um, for instance, you can uh, disable the extensions that will, should speed up the process as well. And uh, when you load the mod, you can just load pieces of that and you can skip the property database. And if you do that, it will not transfer the data to the viewer because the viewer will not load that, that part of the information. So this is uh, this sample, this blog post is showing you a few things that you can disable, property database, specify the IDs and uh, avoid some of the extensions. You don't need them. You mind if you please share this link in the chat? Yes, box? of course. Mm -hmm. so is that what you are asking? I believe so. Um... Okay. And I think he did some showcase in here that it shows around 100 drop to 20 megabytes. But keep in mind, this was before SVF2. So his, it, this is just SVF and uh, just removing the property database for this model, this, this large model here, he was able to drop by 80% 80, 80 of the data transfer. The other thing you can do as well is to limit the amount of memory for the viewer if you have a restricted device. And um, the challenge there is if your model is more, requires more, more, more memory, then it may crash. So it's not very good, but you, some, sometimes you have to do it just to, just to test and make sure that you are mimicking the device you have. I suspect you have like a mobile device that you, that you are trying to optimize, right? Um. We haven't explored that yet. Uh, that's definitely in our uh, roadmap. Um, for now, you know, we have to load other data into our viewer too. Um, so if you put a cap on it, it would impact the performance of other things that we're loading. I think this alternative you shared um, with the, um, just passing the geometry um, could be a, would be a really good thing for us to look into. Thank you. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Um... Uh, yeah, if you are able to uh, pre-process your drawing, um, it is very common to have very large uh, Revit files with you know, a lot of properties on the on the on, on, on the on the module. So if you can pre-process your Navis or Revit file to reduce the amount of properties, that can also uh, work for you. And you can still you still keep the properties, but uh, less properties. You can remove them on uh, on the original file. Oh, you mean uh, doing that post-processing on Revit before loading the model into the viewer? Load, uh, processing the Revit file before translating. So you, you open the Revit with design automation, get rid of most of the uh, properties that you don't need, and then uh, translate that module. But I understand that this is uh, heavy lifting because you have to pre-process the files. It may, it may not be possible. But let's say you are uh, not, let's say you're designing a, an IoT application, right? That will show some properties, but not all of the properties. And that sample, that, that model is kind of stable. You don't have to 
retranslate all the time. It's just a one-off translation. So you can optimize that before translating. So you can have this very lightweight version of your model. Um, if you pull the model from BIM 360, if you pull the SVF and SVF2 from BIM 360, uh, would we get access to that optimized model or would it not go through design automation to no, no. If, if the models come from BIM three hundred and sixty, you can you can do it like that, right? Because I uh, I'll say that you have to uh, remove the properties before translating. If the model is on BIM three hundred and sixty, you'd have to download, remove the properties, and translate again, and sure. that may break it, right? Uh, if if you upload back to BIM, back to BIM three hundred and sixty, then you have a, a, a different different model. Um, what, what I'm suggesting is that if you, if you can process that model and it is, it's something that you don't have to do it all the time because BIM 360, you don't have access to that. You, you cannot do that, right? Because that will mess with the customer data. Sure. I, th I think the typical case will be like an IoT kind of model that you just translate once and then view thousands and thousands of times. So in that case, it makes sense. Uh, can I ask oh. one question regarding SVF? Yes, or please. On the topic uh, for SVF two uh, regarding offline, is it supported now? It wasn't supported, I believe. Yeah. So Last even even on yeah even on SVF, the S the offline workflow is not really supported. It's something that you can do. There are some there are some ways to do it with the browser. Mm -hmm. That the browser is actually uh, disconnected workflows in our less first view, right? That you can do that. Uh, you can make the browser cache your data, and uh, the ultimate version of that will be to download all the assets and serve from your application. With SVF2, uh, we use WebSockets to just transfer the precise amount of data you want. So that's why this, this, the, the SVF2 optimization will not work offline. And, uh, and okay. it will not even work with this kind of disconnected workflow where we have this cached version on the browser because everything is using WebSockets. So um, let me jump in, uh, Augusto. So disconnected workflow is the default for SVF2. So whenever you load uh, a model uh, using SVF2 endpoint, everything is already cached into your browser application database. Mm -hmm. So next time you ask to load the, the same model, it's already on your local machine, period. Uh, we build a database directly when you load it. So this connected workflow is auto-implemented for SVF2. But okay. the uh, um, working offline, completely offline, meaning that you have either the SVF2 on your local machine or on your own server is not supported. Um, Augusto explained um, the reason. Even though technically there's a way to do it, um, it is very complicated on cumbersome and could change. So we really highly recommend not to try because we may change um, many things in the way things are loaded now. Maybe in a couple of months, uh, we'll have a different message, but today you should, you should not, it's better not to try. Um, Okay, so you just suggest against it. So if my use case is I want to serve it from my own server, all the assets right. of Forge and latent viewer. That's because of why, country Why do you think serving from your, your own server would be better from the server? That's a big question. Of course, it won't be better, but it's uh, country regulations. So we're serving oh. as one country that doesn't want to go yeah. outside of the country borders. So if I'm going to use Forge Viewer, I need it to be cached on my server. That's it. Yeah. I don't um, want to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's... For SVF2, it's a bit risky to try. Um, there, there will be... We're still doing some change um, on our end, so it would be quite... Um, not dangerous, but... Um, you will need to, to make change quite often to keep it working. Okay. But I can download the SVF2 
uh, servers from my server and download all the assets and uh, replicate uh, uh, no, behavior. Not, not really. Like, like Augusto said, we don't support people downloading SVF or SVF2 completely offline. Okay. Oh, thank you, Rami, for a question. Thank you, Sri, for the explanation. Uh, learning something new. <laughs> I didn't know we are using the uh, data, the browser, the browser cache for SPF two. It was new to me. Thank you. So we are yeah, very, yeah. Thank you, Rami. So we are very close to the end of the our thirty minutes. Any last questions? Do you have any? Um blog on simplifying the Revit file through design automation from the property side, what we discussed earlier today? Hmm, I would have to look at um, what you can do. Uh, uh, so in theory, what, what you, you would do is open the Revit file with design automation, uh, run through all the elements, check the properties of those elements and check if the property is writable. And uh, there is a, um, yes, so if they are writable, it means that you can you know, erase that value and then delete all of that. Uh, you can definitely, so usually the built-in properties are not the problem. Usually, usually the shared parameters are the problem, right? Because you can create thousands of those. So if you can delete all the shared parameters, that will clearly give you a lot of, a lot of room. And uh, there is a property on the, on the parameter is shared, I believe. So you can definitely look for that and delete all of those. Oh, most of those uh, properties. I don't think we have a sample on that. We can, we can definitely look at it. Yeah. Thank you, Mali. Okay, last chance. Uh, can I? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just a follow up. Uh, there, there was uh, in the last. Uh, AU, uh, some talk about Forge uh, being served from EU servers as well as US servers. Is this still upcoming? Sorry, uh, possible for Revit serving? Can you say again? Can you repeat no, the question? Uh, Forge, uh, the, yeah, Forge to be uh, the bucket stored on EU. It's already there, the right? You... Instead of US. Yeah, so you, you can do that already. This is from, from the beginning of Forge, you can host your data on either US or, or EU. No, no, so the when, API is uh, US, right? The viewer is on US. The, well, the, 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 viewer, the viewer is just a library loading, but the data is coming from mm -hmm. either US or EU. So okay, let me, let me, let me. Uh, you're saying about the forge uh, on the buckets you're, you're asking. You're talking, yeah, right? so if you go to the, AP, yeah, if you go to the API reference for uh, data management, right, OSS uh, buckets, when you create a bucket, you can specify the region. So you say EMEA, right? Yeah, not, yeah, that's not the one. If you go to the, like the viewer or the, uh, then, all, then, all the APIs, there's something about it that's being transferred yeah. to like one of the countries, <laughs> one of the clients. Then, yeah. Okay, so then that's... when you post a job, uh, you, you have to also say EMEA, meaning that the data, will, the translated model will be hosted on, on, on EMEA, regions EU, sorry, EU here. Uh, so that mm -hmm. your original file is on, on EMEA, your, origin, your translated file is also on, on Europe, and then the viewer is just a library that is loading. And then the viewer will load from one of those regions. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you, you have to remember to uh, upload your model to, to Europe and translate your model to Europe. And then the viewer will load from, from, from that region. Yeah, the viewer, the, the, the viewer itself yeah. is just a library that is served. The same applies to BIM360. But in, in case of BIM360, uh, the account is created on either US or Europe. And uh, you, you cannot yeah. change that because the account is hosted there. No, yeah, no. Oh, there is a- Yeah, my question was regarding the viewer. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah, thank you, Adam. So one more. And uh, yeah, so the, the viewer library, the JavaScript code is, is served from our uh, um, um, provider, uh, the, uh, what's the name? The, not DNS, it, it's served, right? But the library is not, it, it doesn't matter because it's just a code. And then with that, you can load your model from the region. Cool. Thank you. All right, so we are just a couple minutes after that. The next coffee break, and thank you for attending today. Thank you for the great questions. Very good discussion. Thank you for, for that. The next coffee break will be September 22nd, two weeks. Um, as usual, same link, same time. And I uh, hope to see you there. Two weeks. That's the same week of, of before the, the AU. Oops, come back here. OK, thank you. See you soon. Thank yeah. you so much for that.